clarity is the starting point of all success. It means clarity of thinking. It means thinking clearly, and it extends from thinking clearly to a series of other things. With regard to clarity, it means the ability to determine exactly what it is that you want to be, have, or do in life. And the more I study successful men and women, the more I find that every single one of them, the top 5%, are very clear about where it is they're going and what it is they want to accomplish. And when I look at unsuccessful men and women, or men and women who seem to be unhappy and floundering, I find that almost invariably they have a very, very limited sense of direction, sometimes no sense of direction at all. You see, we as human beings are goal-seeking organisms. We only function at our very best when we are working toward accomplishing something that is important to us. And in my estimation, 80 to 90 percent of all the unhappiness, hostility, violence, psychosomatic illness, alcoholism, drug addiction, and so on in our society is caused by people having no sense of direction. They don't know where they're going. As they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Now, if you understand this principle, this principle is terribly important. You can be the most talented, the smartest, the best educated person with the most valuable contacts and all the advantages in life, but if you are not focused, it doesn't do you any good at all. I wrote in an article for the Wall Street Journal that if you do not have clear, specific goals for your life, you are doomed forever to work for people who do. The key starting point with regard to clarity is to know where it is you're going and what it is you want to be and what it is you want to have and what it is you want to do. In the most blessed society in all of human history, you can have anything in the world that you want if you can decide what it is that you want. The second key with regard to clarity is decisiveness. Be decisive. I've never met a successful person who was indecisive, and I've never met a failure who was decisive. Be decisive. Develop the characteristic and quality of decisiveness. We know that the reason why we are indecisive is because we're afraid of making a mistake. But the terrible thing is that the way that we think becomes a habit, and the habit of indecisiveness can condemn us to failure. We can be talented and intelligent and ambitious, but if we cannot make the hard decisions in our life, and if we cannot make decisions readily, then what happens is we always have to work for people who do make decisions readily. Now, the interesting thing about decisions is that about 80% of decisions should be made the first time they come up. 80% of decisions should be made the first time they come up. And if you make decisions every single time they come up, sooner or later you will develop the habit of decisiveness. You'll be very clear about what it is you want, and it's easy to make decisions if you know what it is you want to accomplish. One of the major reasons why people are indecisive, in my experience, is they have no idea what they want to accomplish. It's almost like they come to the crossroads, but they don't know which direction to go. 80% of all decisions should be made the first time they come up. And I read a management consultant's report on decisions. He said, the thing to do about decisions is to make a decision. And if that doesn't work, make another decision. And if that doesn't work, make another decision. And if that still doesn't work, you're probably in the wrong field anyway. But the interesting thing is that if you make a decision, you gather momentum. And the difference between successes and failures is not that successful people make right decisions. It is that successful people make their decisions right. In other words, once they, once they have made a decision, they make it come out right. Anybody who's ever started a business knows that when you start a business, you start off with a whole bunch of ideas which the market promptly tells you are completely wrong. Uh, and you probably lose your shirt or most of it. And you have to revise every single decision that you have. But the desire to survive economically, the threat of losing your shirt, is a great motivation to learn quickly and to make decisions. So make decisions. The third point under clarity is to have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, you've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true. And you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers throughout all of history have been dreamers. They've been people with dreams. They've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. In the book of Solomon, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And the metaphysical meaning of that is that where people lack vision, they perish inside because they lose the excitement and the thrill of life. And what most people do because of negative experiences, because of fear of failure and so on, is they, if they have a vision at all, they tone it down so it's so small and so safe that it doesn't turn them on. It doesn't excite them and they wonder why life isn't exciting. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, if the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision, and even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond 
what they were. Every one of us has had an experience. At one time, when we were small, we had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams, if you like, and focus on results, not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are result-oriented. All losers or underachievers tend to be activity-oriented. And in activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do, but they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said, the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. So focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself when in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs, what am I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? Many people, especially in sales, they make the mistake of thinking that shuffling cards and uh, reading through their sales literature and organizing their multiple listings and having coffee with the other people and reading the newspaper advertisements that they placed last week, that this is all part of selling. No, selling is when you're face to face with a real live prospect who is willing and able and capable of buying a product. Everything else from that is self-delusion. What results are expected? The results that are expected of us in selling are sales. And the only time that we are working is when we are doing something that contributes directly to that result. Isn't that true? <coughs> of course. But of course, why do we do the other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason why we do the other things is because they are fun and easy rather than hard and necessary. I think the major reason why people fail in life, if I can pass this on, which wasn't part of this, but the major reason why people fail in life is because of the expediency factor that we always do and we always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things that we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do what is fun and easy today instead of what is hard and necessary and then we have to do what is hard and necessary at the end of our life when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself, to be clear about what it is you want, to be clear where you're going, to be clear about the results that you're expected to accomplish and then to only work on those results the ability to discipline yourself to do that is absolutely critical for success. It is not possible to conceive of a person being successful who is not capable of disciplining themselves to do what is hard and what is necessary rather than what is fun and easy. And when, especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. Now let me give you a method which has helped me write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, uh, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, a wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Um, have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly, and then do this. Every single morning, rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. You can do it all in a paragraph. If, for instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today every single morning. And then every single evening, take about five, 10 minutes, instead of watching television, just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. And sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right that's moved me toward my goals? And second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those, those four steps, by the way, writing and rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions, in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. Because every time you write your goals down, you're programming them into your subconscious mind. When you program them into your subconscious mind, you set up a field of vibration within your brain. And this law of attraction, based on this field of vibration, attracts into your life people and circumstances that harmonize 
with your dominant thoughts. Everybody here has had the experience of starting to read about a subject, think about a subject, become interested in a subject, and suddenly you started to attract into your life books, magazines, articles, conversations, people, opportunities to expand on that subject. Have you had that experience before? What you do is you create a force field, which we cannot explain scientifically, but it is a field of vibration that goes out from you and attracts back into your life everything that you need to realize your dominant goals. And everybody's had the experience of writing down their goals at the beginning of the year and opening up the envelope at the end of the year and finding that 80% of the goals have been accomplished. Have you ever had that experience? Absolutely remarkable, isn't it? The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want, anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis you can have. Anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get, you can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear, speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity.